Sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, are both common and serious for individuals and for society. Improved rates of diagnosis are important to identify and treat these conditions. There are many issues around STI testing, including stigma and public health consequences. These should be raised in a simple, non-judgmental fashion. A standardized approach to an STI history can be very helpful. Begin by asking the patient why they have come and if they are experiencing any signs or symptoms. Inquire into different types of intercourse, including vaginal, oral, and anal. Ask about various risk factors. These include condom use and vaccination status for hepatitis B, a new partner or more than two partners in the past year, previous STI or partner with STI, injection drug use or drugs and alcohol associated with sex, and higher risk settings such as sexual tourism or sex trade workers. Testing should include any pathogens responsible for symptoms. However, as STIs frequently occur together, testing for other common pathogens is also recommended. Typical tests include chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B for those who have not been vaccinated. Screening for pathogens causing bacterial vaginosis, such as candida or trichomonas, is typically not done if the patient is asymptomatic. Chlamydia is the most common bacterial STI, with over 65,000 cases yearly in Canada. It can cause pain and discharge, but is commonly asymptomatic. Samples to collect include urine in men, and cervical swabs, self-collected vaginal swabs, or urine in women, depending on local lab requirements. The gold standard is nucleic acid amplification testing, most frequently using PCR. Culture is rarely done due to its low sensitivity compared with molecular testing, making it unsuitable for screening. Neisseria gonorrhea is the second most common bacterial STI. It too can cause pain and discharge, amongst other symptoms, but can also be asymptomatic. Urethral or cervical swabs are usually used to diagnose gonorrhea. Gram stains have limited utility. However, a urethral swab in men revealing gram-negative diplococci has good positive predictive value. Gram stains are not helpful for women who normally have many gram-negative bacteria living in the vagina. Many labs still utilize culture, but gonorrhea is very labile and is ideally plated to a special culture at the bedside and incubated in CO2. Clearly, this is not possible in most family practices. Confirmation can be done by testing for oxidase and for catalase. Both are positive for Neisseria gonorrhea. However, due to the fragility of gonorrhea, there is an increasing move towards molecular methods for its diagnosis. The advantages are increased sensitivity and independence from the need for organism viability. Counseling surrounding more serious STIs, such as HIV, hepatitis B, and syphilis should also be provided. Discuss the time required for testing results and the ramifications of a diagnosis, including notification of public health. As these organisms cannot be cultured, they are diagnosed by serology, requiring blood to be taken. Normally, blood is centrifuged to provide serum for testing. Initial testing for HIV and for hepatitis can be done using ELISA. Automated machines allow for processing of many samples. Confirmation of HIV is done using a Western blot. Serum is also used for RPR, the screening test for syphilis. Agglutination caused by antibodies suggests a positive result, as evidenced in wells 3 and 4. STIs are the only infections that are completely caused by human behavior. All patients should be counseled on safer sex practices. Effective strategies for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment are required to slow the epidemics of STIs occurring around the world.